We talked a little bit earlier about some of the risk factors for uh, type 2 diabetes, and you mentioned a, a big one was body mass index. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a, a lot of debate there. A lot of people say that's not an accurate indicator. You have, you know, weightlifters and people that are that have low fat percentage, body fat percentage, but their BMI is higher. You know, how do you how do you look at that? Yeah, so I think that um, you know BMI is just one one parameter that we use to estimate mm -hmm. someone's body composition and it isn't the best indicator of body composition for exactly the reasons that you state. Some people have um, very high bone mass as well, mm -hmm. um, and then lean muscle mass isn't considered into the BMI calculation. So it, it can lead to sort of spurious results. Um, that said, it's rather difficult, unless someone is really a heavy duty weightlifter, weight trainer, more competitive, to bring their BMI up over that defined threshold for mm -hmm. obesity. It is possible, some weightlifters do have that much mass, but it's, it's pretty rare for most people. Um, more accurate estimates of body composition include uh, uh, bioimpedance measurement, where we can actually look at the percent body fat, the percent lean muscle, the, and the percentage of water mass within the body. Um, and so that gives us a, a direct indicator of, um, you know, of, of body composition again. And, um, you know, we know that maintaining high amounts of lean muscle mass are very, very important for glucose regulation. Um, lean muscle mass is a very, it's very insulin sensitive tissue and our skeletal muscles use a lot of glucose in there, you know, by moving our, physically moving our bodies around requires glucose to do. So maintaining higher lean muscle mass is uh, beneficial. Probably the best surrogate and one of the most uh, predictive is, is simply waist circumference mm. um, and, and waist to hip ratio as well. But um, waist circumference itself is actually very, very predictive. So, uh, you know, in clinic, we, we measure waist circumferences and we use body impedance assessment even more so than BMI. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there certain numbers people should be aware of when it comes to waist circumference? Yeah, um, it varies a little bit based on ethnicity, but in general, um, you know, we talk about uh, waist circumference in centimeters. So uh, for women, it's greater than 80 centimeters. And um, for men, it's uh, greater than uh, 115 centimeters is where we really see risk start to increase. And th those are criteria for metabolic syndrome, so still in that sort of pre-diabetes range.